Hello, in this video I will show you the basics of editing photos using Blender 2.8 and above. Just a disclaimer, I am not a professional photo editor by any means and I don't really know how to create those beautiful Instagram-esque type photos. But what I will show you is the power of using the free and open source software Blender to edit your photos. The techniques shown here can also be used to edit your own videos as well. If you want to do professional photo editing, I would recommend you use something like Photoshop or GIMP. Having said that, Blender is more than capable of doing some advanced photo editing as well. I would place it somewhere between Microsoft Paint and Photoshop, in that it's much more advanced than Microsoft Paint, but a little behind Photoshop. The user interface can be a little daunting at first if you've never used Blender before, since Blender is mostly used to create 3D stuff, but it does get a whole lot easier once you get used to it. So we'll break this tutorial in two parts. First I'll show you how to do basic photo editing for the image as a whole, then I'll show you how to modify the image itself. For example, if you want to paint something or remove something like pimples and so on. Let's first start off with basic photo editing. So the first thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and open up Blender if you have it installed on your computer. If not, go to blender.org and download it. So once you have Blender open, uh, first thing we want to do is we want to go to the compositing workspace over here. So go ahead and click that, then tick use nodes. Then we'll go ahead and select this node over here called the render layers and then hit X to delete. You can also go to node delete which will also be the same thing as hitting X. Now, the way we'll be doing the basic photo editing is by using this node system. Blender's node system is actually quite powerful. It's actually used to create uh, compositing effects in Blender as well as the animation system and uh, things like that. So for the images that I'll be using in this tutorial, I've downloaded them from pixabay.com as well as from unsplash.com. So I, I took this image from Christina at I don't know, Wosing Tech, Wosing Tech Chat, sorry I don't know how to say that but just giving credit. Uh, also this image from Mother Rajesh, but these rest of the images as well I've downloaded from pixabay.com. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. So the first image that I'll be working with is, let's just pick, I don't know, this image over here, the one with the ocean. I got this from pixabay.com. So how the Blender node system works is you give it a source, in this case the original image, and you have an output, which in this case is the composite node. So the final image that you render out will be from this composite node. So if I go ahead and click and drag from this image node uh, into the input of this uh, composite node, uh, if I go ahead and render, so go render, render image, we have our original image. But uh, obviously it's just the basic image over here. If you want to go ahead and add in some effects and some editing to the photo, we add in nodes in between here. So it's sort of like adding functions or operations on the original image to give an output. So let me just show you what that means. If I go to add and color, and let's just say I choose one node, let's say the brightness and contrast, and I stick that in between these two nodes over here and I uh, click and drag this brightness to about like say 7. If I go ahead and render an image over here, well I, I guess we can't really tell but the image is actually more brighter than it was before. Actually let's turn down the brightness a lot uh, and then go ahead and render image. We can tell that the brightness is now a lot less. So it's done an operation, it's taken the source image, it's made it less bright and then that less bright image is then output to the composite which will be our final render. But from our point of view, when we want to edit photos, we want to see in real time what's happening. So for that, we will use another node called the viewer node. So if you go to add output viewer, alternatively shift A, output viewer. So I want to stick that there and then stick this one over here. So as you can see, the background has now turned into our final image. If you want to zoom this image out, just hit V on your keyboard, that's the shortcut key or you can go over to this view option over here and hit fit so the image will fit your workspace. You can also press move which will allow you to move the image wherever you want. 
uh, or you can zoom in or out. So that's this uh, option over here. If you can't see this option, it's probably because it's hidden. If you want to bring it back, just go ahead and click and drag this arrow or just hit N on your keyboard, which is a shortcut. Okay, so in this case, I'll just hit fit because I, I, I just want it to stay there so I can see what I'm doing. So now if I change the brightness, that will be pretty much my final render. Okay, so here is where you can do pretty much, um, you know, every, everything that you want to do with your photo. But you can also use stuff here like filters, matte, vector, like there's a lot of different kind of effects that you can apply to your photos. So let's start off with just some of the basics. Let's go to color. Let's add in the hue saturation value and let's just drop it in there. I can, for hue saturation value, this will just change the color of the image. So I can make the ocean appear a little purple. I can make it look even brighter. I can make it look more saturated so it doesn't look realistic anymore. Uh, another one you can use is the color balance. This is used a lot in Hollywood movies to give uh, to give the to make the image appear to have a mood or an atmosphere. So if you want to, like, let's get rid of this hue saturation value. So let's click this one and hit X and connect this one to the image. So for example, if you want your image to look happy, you might go for like an orange, yellow, and this one like a blue look. But nevertheless, so that's one way you can change your image. Um, another way is you can use RGB curves. So RGB curves are used to make, uh, if, if you're familiar with um, using curves to change your images, I mean, if you use Photoshop or GIMP, you know what these curves mean, but it just makes your images, uh, you can just change the sort of overall brightness of your images and also the individual, like if you want more reds, uh, if you want less green, if you want more blue, uh, you can yeah, t tweak this curve to however you like. So in terms of the basics of this uh, photo editing, that's pretty much it. And everything is non-destructive. So if you obviously if you don't like a specific node or think it's ruining the image a little bit, then it's not. It doesn't take much effort to simply just uh, select a node, remove it, and then make the image go back to the way it was before. So it's a very non-destructive workflow. So having said that, let's step up our game a little bit and do a little bit more advanced effects than that. Let's go ahead and overlay an image on top of another image. So to do that, I'm just gonna go to the photos and let's just say we'll uh, drop in this photo over here. Okay, so I want this image to be overlaid on top of this image. So the way to do that is by going to Shift A, color. There's another node here called the mix node. Go ahead and click that and let's drop it in, let's say, somewhere uh, here. So I don't, want to, I don't want to include these other effects in this image as well. So I want to take this image separate on its own. So as you can see, we're going to mix this image we had originally with this image. So we can see that we have something that looks like that. Uh, but we can't see the image that's behind. So another thing that I'm... By the way, there's another thing that I forgot to do, which I should have, which I should do with pretty much all photo renders. Um, if I go to this output properties over here, we can see that this will render in 1920 by 1080. If your image is a different dimension, it will not look uh, correct when you render it out. You, it may have these black bars or it just won't look right. So what I always do with uh, photos when I bring it in is I always add in a distort scale node and I always put it before the original image and just change this one to render size same with this one to render size so that it fits if it will end up stretching the image if it's too wide and you don't want it to stretch change it to crop and then it will just expand out the image but in this case I think it fits just perfect same with this one crop so you can choose one of this one whether it stretches whether it fits whether it crops okay always make sure it's like that make sure it's always render size so basically now I have this image over here, which is on top of this ocean image. So in order to see that clearly, I'll probably scale this image to be smaller and put it off to a side so that we can see the ocean image that's behind. So to do this, I'm going to go to Shift A, Distort, Transform. Okay, and then let's drop it in between over there. Next, I'm going to turn down the scale to something, let's just say that small. 
And then finally, I'm just going to go ahead and transform it. By the way, in the Blender world, uh, the horizontal axis is the x-axis and the vertical axis is the y-axis. So let's just move this one all the way to the end. So 203 pixels, maybe I can go like, oops, sorry, minus 300. I wanted to go all the way to the side. Oh, maybe 500. Yeah. And then this one can go down a lot. So click and drag to make it go down quicker. Okay, so I think something like that is okay. But at the moment, we can't see the image that's behind. We're mixing the two images right here, but we can't see the ocean image. It's just looking completely black. The reason why it's showing black over here is because of this bending mode over here. We need to include the alpha. So alpha is sort of like, what it means in Blender is it's the transparent part. So this part over here is transparent. So go ahead and click this one, and then now you have the uh, smaller image overlaid on top of this uh, ocean image over here. Now this, this mix node is quite powerful. You can also play around with the different blending modes over here. Like for example, add. This will add the color. This will add these two colors. So right now it's adding like this color on top of this color, which is why it makes, which is why it makes this one look too bright. So you can play with screen, uh, lighten. It doesn't really show much effect over here. Multiply. It doesn't make sense to use it for this type of scenario, but there is uses for these ones. Okay, so we have something that looks like this. So if I go ahead and render it now, by hitting render image or F12, uh, we don't have the original photo overlaid. Once we have our final image ready, we need to also plug that into the composite node. So we have something that looks like this. So once you're happy with the final image, you can go to image, save as, and you can choose where you want to save this image on your hard drive. Okay. So that's the basics of photo editing. Okay, next up, let's do another little quick task. Uh, let's go ahead and add in this little um, image over here, which is like a road image. And let's get this little clipper image over here, which is used in movies where they say action. So let's bring that image as well. And we want to overlay this image on top of this image. So we can do the same, pretty much the same thing. Shift A, color, mix node. We mix this original image. So what we want to do is we want to put the one in the background on the top uh, slot of this mix node. So this will be the background and this will be the foreground. So if I connect that to the viewer and I guess also to the composite, we can see something that looks like this. I don't want to scale this image and I don't want to transform it to the side. What I do want to see is I want to see the, uh, the background image uh, in places where this green part is. So this is sort of like green screening as well. We want to remove all these parts in green so that we can show this, um, this uh, road at the back over here. So the way to do that in Blender is to use another node, Shift A, Matte, and Chroma Key. So if I, if I go ahead and stick that one in there, uh, nothing will happen, but we need to change this key color. So go ahead and click this color. And if you know the color of this type of green, uh, you can go ahead and search it here. But in this case, I don't. So I'm going to go ahead and use this eyedropper tool. So click it and click around over here. And then we see absolutely nothing happen. So actually something is happening. So if I move this image on its own and look at the viewer, it has removed the parts in green. So if I take the original image over here, it's in green. But if I add in this chroma key over here, all the green parts are gone. So how do I overlay this image on top of this uh, photo over here? Well, it actually took me a little bit of a while to figure this out, but apparently you need to take this matte output and stick it into the factor. And there you go. You have the original image. If I go ahead and render image, we see something that looks like that. Of course, the hand is cutting out, which I don't like. So the reason why it's cutting out in the render but not here is, again, we're not using that... Uh, distort scale node that we should be always using. So change this to render size and you can choose crop or fit but I don't like fit so I'll just go ahead and use crop. For this one maybe I, I don't have to keep going shift A distort and, and doing the whole thing again. I can select this one and hit shift D which will duplicate this node and then stick it over here. So it saves a bit of time and as you can see it's cutting the hands out over here. So maybe I'll go ahead and for this one choose fit 
which will uh, make it look like that, but maybe move this one to the side. So in this case, I will use a transform. So distort transform, and let's move it off to the side. So click and drag until it hits the side. Now if I go ahead and render, render image, that looks right to me. Perfect, so it looks like there's a guy right there who's going action in the middle of a roadway mountain scene. But if I zoom in, you can see there are a little bit of artifacts. There is a bit of aliasing, like these little stepped pixels kind of look to it. And it also looks a little bit green. So that's one of the weaknesses of using this chroma key. If you want to use something a little bit more advanced, uh, I would use the keying node. So let me go ahead and remove this by hitting X and go Shift A, Matte, Keying Node. This is a little bit more advanced. It can help the original green screen image to blend into the background better. So go ahead and connect this one to this one and this one to this one. We can't see much going on there. Key color, same thing, go ahead and select that one. I will use the eyedropper to filter out that one. For the matte, go ahead and connect this one to this one. So again, we don't have much difference, difference over here. So as you can see, this one now, it looks a lot more cleaner than the original image. So if I just zoom in more, it doesn't have as much aliasing, but if you want to make it look even nicer and make it blend in even more, uh, I recommend you add in a bit of pre-blur. So it just blurs the this image between this and this one. Uh, and also maybe a bit of post-blur. I think that'll do some effect. I can't really see much going on over here. Uh, and uh, finally, the dilate erode. Uh, oops, let's just move it in a bit more so that it cuts into the image a little bit more and then it helps the image to blend in uh, better. So if I look at that one now, uh, it looks better. Okay, so I think I'll just stop it at that. The final little project that I want to do is I want to change the color of an old man's eyes. I want to start from scratch and let's drag and drop this one. Okay, and what I'll do is let's connect this one to this one and also to an output viewer node. Like that. Let's zoom out by hitting V. And I'm going to go ahead and go to distort, scale, and connect this one to this one. Change this to render size. And let's go fit or crop. Mm. Yeah, I'll go with crop. Okay, we can, oops. Maybe I want to see a bit more of the eyes, so I will hit shift and just uh, drag this one a little down. Okay, so we have something like that. Oh, actually, we'll just leave it the original. Yeah, something like that would be good. Okay, so what I want to do for this project, so let's go to view and hit fit. What I want to do for this project is I want to change this old man's eyes. I want to change the color of it. So I'm, I'm just going to guess that his eyes are a bit more orangey, I guess. A bit more on the orange side. Maybe a slight touch of green. But let's go ahead and change just his eye color. So to do that, we need to first mask out where his eyes are and then add in a color. So just for the coloring part, that should be relatively easy. Let's go Shift A, color. Maybe we'll just use an RGB curve. And for the R, uh, and then go ahead and click R and drag this up so we see that kind of color and for the green we'll also increase it a little but a bit more on the red so oops too much green and yeah i think something like that is about the kind of eye color i want to go for something around that but not as much blue more on the red. Okay, so that's the sort of eye color that I want to go for. But for now, I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to leave it like that. And just push this one off to the side. Don't connect it with anything. Um, what we need to do now is we need to mask out these two eyes. Alright, so the quickest way to do that is I'll quickly go ahead and drag this one over here. We don't need to see the timeline because it's not animation. So let's change this one to the image editor. We will open up the uh, image of that man that we have over here. And we need to change this type from view to mask. And we'll need to create a new mask. I'll call this one uh, left eye. 
So his left eye is actually this one. From our view, you think it's this one, but it's actually this one. So let's go ahead and draw in the mask. So first, what you want to do is hit Control and then left click. So keep going Control, left click, and then keep adding these little points around. So, oops. Uh, points around until it covers the entire eyeball. Mine doesn't look perfect, but it doesn't matter. I'm just doing this quickly for a tutorial. So you want to keep clicking like this. And finally, what you want to do is once you reach the once you reach somewhere around here, you fill this circle by hitting Alt C, or going to Mask, Toggle Cyclic, which is the same thing as Alt C anyway. Okay. I can go ahead and add in another mask here, but I actually can't. The mask can only be in one like one kind of area, so that's why I can't do another one. So that for that reason, I will need to go ahead and create a new mask, and we'll call this one the right eye. Okay, same thing over here. Control left click, control left click all the way until it covers the entire eye area. And then Alt C to finish it off. That should be it. Back to the compositing. So let's just drag this down. What we're going to do is go into input that mask. So go to Shift A, input mask. And we're going to change this one from nothing to left eye. Let's go ahead and duplicate this by hitting Shift D and moving it over here. Change this from left eye to right eye. So we have these two masks over there. And Using those masks, we're just going to go ahead and uh, connect them up to the mix nodes. So if I connect this one to this node and then use this mask as the factor, we can see that it it, uh, it mixes this original image that we have over here with a white color, which in this case is where the eyes are. Uh, same thing with this one. So let's duplicate this mix node, Shift D. Uh, and then use this one as the factor that controls the other eye. So this factor part over here, it says which part of the image should have this image and which part of the image should have this image. In this case, a plain color, which is white. So this eyeball area is controlling where it's going to be white and where it's going to have the original image. Okay, let's, uh, so hit B to box select these ones and hit G to move or just click and drag or we'll just click and drag these ones out of the way. What we now need to do is we need to add in the colored eye to each of these ones. So to do that, I'm going to go ahead and connect the original image to the one with that, that would convert it to the orange as we saw earlier, but we only want it to affect the eyeball part. So connect this to where it's white and connect this one to where it's white. And there we go. We have our old man with striking orange eyes. But it looks a little bit fake. It, the edges look a little sharp. So the what I usually do is I would blur that out by going to Shift A, Filter, Blur. So let's just blur that part. Uh, and I'll change. This, I usually change this to Fast Gaussian, which makes it faster. Uh, and then maybe a blur value of 20 on the X and 20 on the Y. So you can see it looks a bit more. It, it blends in a little bit better now. Same with this one. Let's shift D and just stick it in there and I don't have to do anything, it will automatically do it for me. And we have a node set up like so. Okay, if you find that th this orange part is a little bit too strong, uh, it's uh, making it look a little too scary, then what you want to do is you want to go ahead and add in another mix node. So let's shift D, mix this one. And you want to have the original image, the one without the colored eyes, as the backdrop and the uh, newly composited image on the front. So now we can use this factor over here. So factor of zero means completely this image slot over here, and factor of one means completely this image slot over here, which is our composited image. So we can just drag this and decide how strong we want our eye color to appear. So if I go very, very subtle, it blends in with the image better. So as you can see, it looks a little bit more striking. And that pretty much completes the image. So if I go ahead and connect this one to the composite node and hit render image, that is our final image.
Okay, so hopefully at this point you can see how powerful Blender can be for editing photos and also videos as well. I didn't cover this, but you don't, as the input source, you don't have to use an image. You can also use a movie clip, in this case, a video clip. So just go ahead and open and find a video clip that's on your computer. And it will do pretty much the same thing. If I connect this one, you can do the same thing, like change the colors and the mood and the atmosphere by using these color nodes. Or you can also go ahead and um, use this movie clip to add in a chroma key. So if, if you're recording yourself behind a green background, you can remove the green background and make yourself look like you're in, you know, in the middle of space or something like that. So Blender can allow you to do that. Okay. So that concludes that first part of the tutorial. The second part of the tutorial will show how to uh, manipulate the actual image itself. So I would recommend that you go ahead and click on the link in the description to go to that second part. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop a comment below. And if you enjoyed the video, please go ahead and like, share and subscribe as it will help you make more content like this. Thanks for watching.